So our first NBA playing tournament game is set. We have the Atlanta Hawks matching up against the Chicago Bulls in that matchup on this coming Thursday. Home court advantage is still up in the year, but the way things are looking, Chicago may end up having home court advantage. Not only that, but they do have a roster advantage as Atlanta is going to be without Jalen Johnson, who was a major most improved candidate this season, and they're going to be without Onyeka Okungu. They're going to have Trey Young. Obviously, he's back and healthy alongside with DeJounte Murray, but they're dealing with a relatively less healthy roster than the Bulls. Now, I know Chicago is going to be without Zach Levine and obviously without Lonzo Ball, but they've been able to somewhat manage through most of this season without those two guys. But to be honest, I am not interested in this matchup at all. I don't care what happens out of this game because I don't think either of these teams, if they are able to squeak into the playoffs, are going to do anything substantial at all. And what we have here is this matchup between two of some of the most disappointing teams in the Eastern Conference. And I would say, let's start here, the Atlanta Hawks, since 2021, have been flat out the most disappointing team in the entire league, season in and season out. They are the number one most disappointing, underwhelming squad. So let's kind of break it down, right? So let's start when they go and draft Trey Young. Bring in Trey Young. He is this dynamic scoring point guard who can pass the ball at a high level, very divisive coming out of college. People kind of thought that they were stat padding him, running so much of their offense, that Oklahoma team running so much of that offense through him. They didn't think his game was going to be translatable to the NBA. Then he gets in the NBA, puts up some pretty good numbers, right? Not efficient, not a great defensive player at all. So we're wondering if he is a winning player. Then we go into the 2020-21 season and Atlanta gets off to a rough first half of that season. Then Nate McMillan Millen takes over the reins as their head coach, and they take a major step up defensively, and they go into the playoffs, and they dominate. That first round, they took out one of the best defensive groups in the NBA in the New York Knicks, and they gave Madison Square Garden one of their most iconic playoff performances since the 90s, not in their favor, but just talking about how Trey Young completely dominated them throughout that entire series and bowed down to the crowd. It was really Reggie Miller-like in that series. And then second round, they get the Philadelphia 76ers. And that was an infamous series where we saw the meltdown of Ben Simmons and pretty much the last of all-star Ben Simmons, right? After that series, nothing was ever the same at all. He doesn't end up playing for the Sixers past that. Then there's that hideous Brooklyn Nets stint, which is kind of still going on right now. So that series changed Ben Simmons' career for the worst. And then they go into the Eastern Conference Finals and they match up against the Milwaukee Bucks. Here's the intriguing thing about that series. They took Milwaukee to six games. What would have happened if Trey Young was healthy for all of those six games? Because Trey Young only played four. He was hurt like near the latter part in that series. So what if Trey Young, who was playing amazing basketball, and at that time, at that time, was making an argument at being a better player than Luka Doncic, who a lot of people were saying was better than him at that time. But he was making a very, very compelling case. Then he goes out, Atlanta loses in six, and the Bucs end up going to the NBA Finals and winning a championship, beating the Phoenix Suns. But like I said, one of the biggest what ifs is what if Trey Young didn't get hurt in that series? What would have ended up happening? Would the Hawks have gotten to the finals? And with that momentum and the fact that they beat or they would have beat the then defending champion uh, Milwaukee Bucks, would they have been able to knock out the Suns? That is a major, major what if. What if Trey Young didn't get hurt in the 2021 Eastern Conference Finals? But either way, even though they didn't win a championship, it was a very surprising playoff run that had shown us a lot of promise for this team. They had a lot of high expectations coming into the next season. Then the next season, very, very disappointing. They take a major dip defensively, which was weird. Very Dallas Mavericks-like. Like when the Mavericks in 2022, when they made their Western Conference Finals run, they were elite defensively. And then after that, up until now, they took a major dip on the defensive end and haven't been the same. So the Hawks took a dip, dip defensively that year, and they end up losing in the first round to the Miami Heat. Then they go and pick up DeJounte Murray in the offseason, right? And that was a major move because we're like, this is the perfect player to put next to Trey Young, a really good two-way point guard, one of the best two-way point guards in the league who does have some playoff experience. People forget that DeJounte Murray, even though he's relatively a young player, not younger than Trey Young, but he's still 
you know, not a, a super NBA veteran just yet. But at that time, he did have some run with the Spurs in deep playoff appearances. And like I said, he was the perfect guy to put next to Trey. Not only was he a threat offensively, but he can be a threat defensively. He could be a point of attack defender. They get together in that first season together. Still very disappointing. They still didn't become a great defensive group at all. And they end up being a playing tournament team. They did get into the playoffs, but lost in the first round to the Boston Celtics. And then here we are with this team now. Still very disappointing. Once again, they are a playing tournament team. There was not one thing this season in particular that they were great at. I know they dealt with some injuries. Trey Young was out for a pretty good amount of the season. As I mentioned earlier, I don't even think he was able to play in the All-Star game due to his injury. And now we're talking about the Jalen Johnson injury. And we're also talking about the Onyeka Kongu injury. So they're dealing with a depleted roster, but still... Very disappointing group since that deep playoff run, right? And health hasn't been their number one issue, right? They've had their opportunities to build off of that 2021 run, and they just weren't able to do it. I don't know what it was in particular that didn't allow them to get back to that level, especially the season afterwards. They came back with almost the same roster. They came back with Nate McMillan. Then they go get Quinn Snyder. So maybe they needed a coaching change. Maybe that was what was it. And still, even with getting Quinn Snyder and DeJounte Murray, no difference at all. I don't know what to attribute the downfall of the Atlanta Hawks to at all. I, I don't know. Very talented group, a team that is built to actually compete. I don't know if they're championship built, but they're built to compete. They're built to be a consistent playoff group, and they have not been able to return to that level that they were at in 2021. So that's the story with the Atlanta Hawks. I don't expect much from them at all. And they're in a situation where if they end up losing in the first round again, some things about this core has to be reconsidered. Do we move away to John St. Murray? And do we try to build more around Trey Young and Jalen Johnson as that main duo here in Atlanta? Or do we move on from Trey Young, right? There are a million different possibilities that can happen here for Atlanta. But no matter which way you slice the cake, they're going to lose in the first round and they're going to be in a situation where they're going to have to shake major things up with their roster. Very, very tough to say, considering how much they peaked a couple of years back, but they just weren't able to return to that. And here we are in this pretty much lose-lose situation. Now, if they end up making a surprise deep playoff run in the East, I'm wrong. I would love to see that. I love seeing unexpected playoff runs, much like the Miami Heat, who came from a playing team to getting to the NBA Finals. But I don't think it's happening this year with Atlanta. If you don't play defense, especially then you're not getting deep into the NBA playoffs, especially if we're talking about matching up against the Milwaukee Bucks or the Boston Celtics. Then let's talk about the Chicago Bulls. Things in Chicago have been very, very weird since the Derrick Rose injury. Yeah, they had a couple of playoff appearances and great playoff moments. There was that series where Nate Robinson completely took over against the Brooklyn Nets. They ended up losing, or I think getting to the second round and losing to the Miami Heat that year in 2013. Then there was Derrick Rose's return. He gave them some pretty good playoff moments in that series against Cleveland. I believe in the second round when Cleveland made their first uh, NBA finals run in the uh, LeBron and Kyrie era. And then after that, things were really quiet with them. Things were kind of weird. Then there is a lot of promise. They bring in Zach Levine. Then they start moving from there and building from there. You bring in Lonzo Ball who's like on the brink of being an all-star point guard. He was on the brink of finally emerging into that franchise player that the Lakers drafted him to be. Then you also have DeMar DeRozan. When they first got that season kicked off with that trio, that looked like a championship winning group. I'm in St. Louis. I wanted to make that trip to Chicago to go see that group play. Then here come the injuries. Lonzo goes out. And everything just kind of falls from there. It was a very, very rough injury because not only was Chicago on the brink of being a really good team, but as I said, Lonzo was on the brink of becoming that all-star player and all of that got hindered, right? There was so much criticism about Lonzo's game and he was finally reaching a point to where he was becoming that elite two-way point guard Magic Johnson drafted him to be and then he gets out due to an injury. Now this season, again, injuries. Zach Levine is out. But even on top of that, Zach Levine doesn't even want to be here anymore. And Zach Levine is almost untradeable. We saw the trade rumors. Teams weren't willing to pick him up because they felt like he wasn't a player that was going to contribute to winning. And now especially his trade value is even tougher this offseason because you have those criticisms about his game and the injury. He missed a substantial part of this season. He won't be back at all this season. So it's going to make him very, very tough to trade. On top of that, DeMar DeRozan is an unrestricted free agent. I don't anticipate him staying here because he's at a point in his NBA career where I feel like he's ready to take a lesser role to make an NBA title run. 
flat out to solidify himself as a Hall of Famer. He has every right to do it. I think he should. So it is a good chance that out of all of this, the Chicago Bulls, after showing a ton of promise, Last season, after getting Lonzo, Zach, and DeMar together and being a team that could actually contend for something, they're going to have to fall right back into rebuild status. Hate to see it, but it's the truth. Yes, there have been some bright spots for them this season. Alex Caruso continues to establish himself as one of the best defensive players in the entire league. Is going to end up making another all-defensive first team this season if everything ends up going right with these last couple of matchups that they have. Yes, Kobe White was amazing. He finally reached that level that we have wanted to see him reach in a very, very long time. He's going to end up winning most improved player. But still, very good chance that out of all of this, out of all the work they put in that offseason to bring those three guys together, now we have to come back in this season face the reality that two key all-star starters, Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, may not be here, and they're going to have to re-figure this whole thing out, right? They're going to have to redetermine what direction they're going to want to go into. As I said, I don't anticipate DeRozan staying here if he ends up losing in the play-in or the first round again. Right now, Chicago is just not an attractive spot for a guy who's an unrestricted free agent who needs an NBA championship at this point in his career. Zach Levine doesn't really want to be here. They're definitely going to look to move him, right? And we'll see what his trade value is, right? How much you're going to get back for, for him. If you can get good draft compensation back for him, that's perfect. But as I said, hate seeing a team that was on the brink of contention have to go back into rebuild position. Hate seeing it. So that's the truth about this matchup. It doesn't matter because no matter what ends up happening, none of these teams are going to get into the playoffs and beat any of the top teams in the Eastern Conference. They're just not built for it. They're both dealing with injuries. They're both dealing with identity issues, and they just don't have enough talent at this point in time to make a deep run. So no matter what ends up happening, both of these groups, after showing so much promise over the years, are going to have to go back into their shell and go back into rebuilding position. Like I said, I hate when that happens with teams that show a ton of promise. But tragically, sadly, that's the case with the Atlanta Hawks and the Chicago Bulls. Now, for the Bulls, you may have this. Maybe you can sell DeMar DeRozan this offseason on the possibility of Lonzo returning by next year. And that may get Zach Levine to buy in. And maybe if you keep holding out, Maybe you return to that group that you were when Lonzo was there and all three of those guys were healthy. But ATL right now, they don't have that luxury. There's not much right now to hold out to. I think we're just going to have to figure out that the DeJounte murray Trey Young pairing isn't going to work. They're going to have to redetermine a lot of things with this roster and with coaching because the Quinn Snyder thing just never ended up working, which was very confusing to me. So... Upside for Chicago looks a little bit higher right now than the Hawks, just as far as winning and being a contender, right? There's a small chance. Chicago's biggest issues is health, right? Atlanta's issues is how do we build a contender around Trey Young? Or the other question is, can we build a contender around Trey Young? We know if Lonzo ends up coming back and healthy and Zach Levine is back and healthy, that's a contending team, right? With the right role players around him, with Alex Caruso out there and guys like um, Io Dasumu and, those, Dasumu and those guys around that big three, yes, that's a team that can win. With ATL, no matter which way you cut it, they're going to have to move away from either Trey Young or DeJounte Murray and figure out how do we actually build a contender around these guys. So I think upside is a bit higher here for Chicago. I am interested to see how these things end up flipping for both of these squads.